Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. This gon' be good. This gon' be good. Hey guys, Jamin Jackson here. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. I am your online arbiter of all things Lindy Hop, and this one's gonna be a good one. I love watching dancers in Canada. There is something about the Canadian scene that just makes me come alive. Oh, last time I was there, I was working with one of my partners on a routine, and I got a chance to just kind of go around that community and visit all the dancing uh, scenes there, and it was a blast just to get the collective style. Because you know, when you go to certain places, um, a lot of people kind of have a style. I don't want to say everyone is homogenous, but you can see where everyone kind of gets their influence from. And uh, when I went to Montreal or Montreal, where they say it, um, I got a chance to experience a lot of uh, the influences that were there from one of my dance partners and some of the other leaders in that community. So it's really special to see what has blossomed out of that. And I am excited to look at this video because I believe it is CSC uh, 2019. This is a competition that they have. I believe it's a Strictly uh, Let's Hope, which is you know a little bit of choreography, a little bit of social, but it should be good. So let's get into it. And here we go. All right, yep. Canadian Swing Dance Championships, sponsored by Vitre Plus Fais La Vevo. I couldn't read it all. Lenny Hop Strictly. Yeah, thanks for videotaping this crap. This Without video footage, we have nothing to prove that actually happened. Man, the singer is great. If anybody knows this band, let me know in the comment section. I really like, I collect a lot of music from around the world, different bands and CDs. Make sure you get that stuff signed too. Oh yes, that's Jean-Philippe. I like his dancing. Oh, it's gonna be good. Uh, some other day. Oh, that's John. Yes. What's going on, man? I haven't seen him dance in a long time. And, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? It's going to be a good warm up. He has a fiddle. I love that sound. I, I live in Oklahoma, so when people play with like fiddles, that's Western swing music for us. We love that stuff. We pretty much have a venue like the Savoy Ballroom, but for Western swing here in Tulsa. It's called Kane's Ballroom. Bob Wills, uh, the Texas Playboys. They're getting a good warm up. This is nice. Five minute long warm up, right? <laughs> See who can last it. Yeah, I hope they include the names. 
Let's hear it. <laughs> Good way to start. Good timing on that. Yeah, like a hair flip. You gotta have those. You gotta have those. Yes, way to go through it. Round two, here we go. All right, this is the make or break for me. 
Because usually that first set, either they come out swinging, or they kind of relax the first one, and then the second one they either relax or they go all out. <laughs> yes, I like that. Doesn't look hurt. That's good. Like that. Turn, yes. Everybody swing out. Ooh, her voice. Give it up, give it up. That was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. I, um, man, I gotta get the name of that band. I hope they have like music. It's really hard buying music uh, from a band because usually when it's live, it's a completely different feeling and that you had in that moment when you're dancing. But then when you listen to like a studio recording, it, it's really hard to capture that essence. Um, and I know a lot of musicians understand that uh, frustration, but doesn't matter to me. I still got to get the music. So whoever that is, I got to figure that out. Ah, uh, what did I think about that competition? <clears throat> I think this one's a little bit more difficult to judge. Uh, obviously, I look at three elements. I look at control, timing, and creativity. Control simply means can I see a transfer of energy from the leader to the follower and not have any distracting elements there. I wanna see start, and then I wanna see finish, right? And I think most of these dancers were able to dance, so I can't be too harsh on their ability to do control because obviously they are at a strictly competition. However, when everyone can do the tr control, I have to look at it with a more nuanced eye. Um, I like to see if the leader can be a little bit more quiet after giving the energy to the follower so my eyes can actually pay attention more to the effect of what just happened. So um, if I'm looking at the control part and I'm judging who got first on control, just on that part, for me, it's either between both of the Johns. Uh, the second couple, uh, I think his name was John, they had a lot of control for me. Leader wasn't moving too fast. I was able to pay attention to the follower and actually see uh, some syncopations from her. It was good, wasn't too busy. 
this uh, the the other John, I believe it was Jean Philippe. Uh, they also had control. I could see the initial response and the echo effect of that. So for me, that that is an extremely important factor uh, in judging competitions. It's almost like someone uh, who knows a lot of different things, and then when they get up to do something really important, they forgot those things that are most important, right? And so for me, knowing how to do the technique with control is most important. No matter how long you've been dancing, um, that's important to me. So when I watched everyone, those were the top two with control. I would also give a shout out to Egle and I believe it was Felique, uh, Felix. They had a lot of control too. They were doing some kind of, uh, uh, I think it wasn't Charleston. They were doing shag a little bit, St. Louis shag, and they were doing Lindy Hop in their second set. I could see that. Very good. The couple that had timing, the good timing for me with control, uh, I would have to give it to... Again, the second couple, John and his partner. Now, they did some amazing aerials in time. Anytime someone's going to do aerials in a Strictly for me, you automatically get more points because the level of difficulty and the potential for disaster is higher. And so they did some aerials in both sets and they nailed it both times. So for me, that is an amazing spectacle to see when they can get it in swing time and have good control. So immediately that person is bumped up to second place for me as a whole in the competition. Strong control, strong timing. So I give it up to them. The one that had the second best timing, again, I would give that to, I would give that, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there was any pronounced dancing enough that stood out as much to me because of those aerials. So I wouldn't be able to accurately assess who I would think had control and timing that was greater than that second couple. So again, um, for me, they would get second place so far. And that last, that last bit of uh, stuff I'm looking for, I would say it's the creativity part. And that's the hardest part to do because it takes a tremendous amount of boldness and uh, audacity to do something that people haven't seen before. And I didn't see a whole lot of uh, ingenuity I hadn't seen before. However, I did see some things that were done differently, just done differently. And uh, I think the big shout out for me uh, on the most creativity, I would give it to the last couple, which was Zach, I believe it was Zach and his partner. They, for me, had some things that I never tried before, like I, things that weren't hard. It was just that they were doing it in a way that made me pay attention to them because not everybody was doing those types of moves. So big shout out on the creativity part. And ultimately, when I got to think about who was the closest to having all three in a competition to this manner, I would have to give the trophy to the second couple, John and his partner. Just because they had the control, was reasonable. Uh, they also had impeccable timing because of those aerials. And they had a few moves they were doing that were unusual, right? But I wouldn't say the unusual moves was the biggest thing I was judging them on. I was actually judging them higher because of the previous two things, control and timing. And with that, because their control and timing was higher than everybody else's control and timing, they could be a little bit lower on the creativity part. Right, so this is me as a judge. This is what's going on in my head when I got a list of people, the names I don't know, and I'm going through. I, that's what I got to look at first because that's the part of Lee, uh, Lindy Hop for me that's not really subjective. I got to see something that fits within that because number one, we're dancing to music, right? We're dancing to music. We're also dancing with each other, and we have to be able to see what's happening. Is it? I want to see one body with two people sharing energy at different times, like not at the same time, right? And a lot of times people get excited and they're dancing and I don't know as an audience member what I should be looking at. So control is important for me. Timing is important for me because the music is what we're dancing to. And if I don't listen to swing music and I'm a novice and I am watching someone do a presentation like this, I want to walk away wanting to go download that song because their dancing amplified the music in a way that was special. How do you do that, Jamin? How do you amplify the music? Well, swing dancing has interesting, predictable timing. 
right? It's like the blues structure or regular like basic swing format. So when people do stuff on that fourth eight count and it's the most pronounced part of the music that's a transition into another phrase, my ears peak up and my eyes peak up, right? Just to, to my eyes focus on what they're doing to see if what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing match. But then I'm looking at creativity. Like I said, creativity is the thing that makes people go, wow, I've never seen that before. Wow, how did they do that? And that's the hardest part to me in Lindy Hop. So that's how I look at it. And not every judge goes by that. Um, when everybody has those three things, I have to become a little bit more nuanced in my assessment of everybody's dancing. But it's rare that every person is doing those three, three things perfectly. I've rarely seen that happen. So what do you think? Who do you think should have won this Strictly Lindy competition? It is really hard to judge. I will say most of judging is subjective, but I like to put my opinion out there because no one is neutral and at least you will know mine. This is what I like to go by when I judge. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment sections. Who do you think should have won this strictly? Am I crazy? Are the people that I selected overrated? I don't think so. I think they were amazing. And so I encourage you, get plugged in, start Lindy hopping, and let me know what you think in the comment section. I will see you in the next reaction video. Take care.